Cool. So to get started for uh, today's community call, the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, like, I guess one of my favorite parts of this project is that lots of cool people just reach out and are offering to help. Um, and so we had this uh, salesperson who works for like a technology company in the DC area, uh, send us a cold email. And he basically said, Hey, like, I'm good at sales. Do you guys need some volunteer sales help? Like I can reach out to like different department chairs or companies to try and like drum up like partnership interest type stuff. And then also said that he'd help us with like uh, writing copy for cold emails in case we wanted to like have community members like reach out to their professors or something like that. Um, and so I just wanted to hear everybody's thoughts on like if um, they feel like it'd be useful if we set up almost not like classes is the wrong word, but like workshops um, with this person in order to like help glean from their brain, how we can like start to organize some outreach efforts and maybe even like incentivize it with research coin. You guys would be interested in that if we did something. I'm not sure who mentioned, but somebody mentioned like uh, the web 3.0 stuff definitely needs more copywriters. Uh, so, like, if you can manage to get some additional knowledge uh, regarding that, that won't be wasted for sure. Oh, so you're saying, like, uh, like writing cold emails to, like, explain how blockchain works for people outside the field or something like that? I mean, not necessarily, but among other things. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I'll invite him so to Sorry, go ahead. A quick question, just to clarify, you mean the outreach as in recruit more researchers to use Research Hub? Uh, yeah, I think it could be a whole lot of different things. It's like a, a sales is a skill set. You know, there are like some tools that people use and like knowing how to phrase emails in a way where you like are most convincing in the shortest amount of time, knowing how to like find, right. topics. you know, there's, there's like a lot of tricks to it. And so it basically would be someone who does it full time and it's like, you know, made a career out of it, um, doing technology sales, uh, who would more or less almost be like helping to guide efforts, like if anybody needed any help. And then he had even offered to like do some outreach on his own to get feedback. So just to would, kind of it, would it be possible to meet all together in, you know, in conjunction with maybe Kobe and other people from the dev team? Because like, to be honest, uh, right now, like I have an opportunity to present, invite, you know, other people and, you know, researchers and, you know, people who work in my university to research hub. I don't necessarily do it just because there is like, I think the, the, the landing, the onboarding procedure is lacking to be honest. So I'm, I'm waiting till research hub gets to a point where I should start inviting people, you know, and it's like, like it would be a waste of resource to develop like a really appealing and profound invitation system, but people would actually, you know, get to like the the home page of research hub and would have no idea what's going on you know yeah i mean that's amazing feedback so thanks for saying that and that even gets back to what i think um like one of brian's main perspective is where like the product should be good enough to cause like organic growth so it basically should be good enough where anton's like hey you know i want to invite all my friends because this is so great you know, and we're not there yet. So if we put sales efforts out now, um, it might make us feel like we're actually there when in reality we're not. So I, I guess um, for, for for Nick and uh, Dragon too, like, do you guys feel the same way as Anton? Do you feel like it's not quite there yet, like getting somewhere, but not quite there yet? And if so, you know, what, what are the things that you feel like are most lacking at the current moment? Yeah, so I've been, I've been sort of, holding back, uh, spreading the word, uh, just to, uh, at first I was waiting for the, the post, um, feature, which would be ideal for, uh, people in, in my area. Uh, but also, um, yeah, just waiting for more content on that front. Uh, so people would be more incentivized to post, um, and then spread the word, but also I wanted to just check with you guys. When do you guys feel like we should uh, start to reach out? Because I, I like the idea of having that person reach out to the department chairs, but also uh, I feel like uh, we should also have some sort of like advocate program uh, where like 
I could reach out to the geography people uh, if we have a biology person that, uh, so like from certain fields. Yeah, totally. Was in an advocate program, uh, what would you like to see for that? Like some, some kind of like, yeah, just curious what you, you think that would consist of. Uh, what do you mean? Like in terms of like rewards or? Yeah, or, or just anything, you know, like instruction, rewards, like organization, like what would you like to see us do to help make that happen? Yeah, organization like uh, different advocates uh, should get together maybe with this new person uh, and um, basically go over the, the uh, selling points um, and uh, make sure that the, the the page is ready for it to scale. That 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 was my other question. That like, uh, if we start spreading the word like crazy, it, do you have enough um, ca capacity to to scale? Uh, I know there were some issues today. Was that related to that to to traffic? No, not for more users. We've been adding new features, so sometimes it'll break code and cause something to slow down. Thomas, do you know exactly what happened earlier today? You were you working on that? Um, yeah, I think it was just like a leftover call to the database that we that we didn't need. Basically, slowed the site down. Patrick removed it. Okay, so Nick, if I can uh, repeat back to make sure I understand where you're coming from. Um, you do want to share research help with people in your scientific community but you don't think it's there yet. And the two reasons you cited were, um, you like to post feature, but there's not enough content yet. So like once that becomes more robust and more examples of like how that would operate, that would be more appealing for you to refer, which is good because that's not a technical thing. So we can try and make that happen. And then um, the second one, if I heard correctly, was like, um, you know, small things like occasionally, like this morning, uh, loading times taking longer, you know, like that type of sort of bugs in the system uh, makes you feel like it's not ready to totally like refer to all of your network yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That exactly. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll make sure I share that with the rest of the team too because I think it's it's an important point that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks where we just want to get the performance of the site up to the point where like ninety nine point nine percent of people can use it with no issues. And then, you know, there's some edge case bugs, but that the grand majority are covered. As Dragon, do you feel the same way as uh, the other two? Uh, the way I see it, like there's uh, pre-conversion onboarding, like getting people familiar with what it is at all that you're offering. And there is the actual like feature onboarding uh, after they converted and perhaps created an account. Uh, and like those are very different and it seems what you were talking about the person that wants to help is kind of that like sales talk copywriting and all of that like that is a low risk potentially high reward and you like it's low risk so like you can just add it and invest some time in it uh, and expect some decent return uh, and again that is just one part of the funnel for users uh, so investing in each of those steps in the funnel won't be a mistake for sure uh, so it's fine uh, to give it a go. Okay, cool. Uh, you mentioned the onboarding. Do you, do you feel uh, similarly where you think Research Hub needs more instructions on what utility we provide and what users should do? So as someone who didn't have previously a uh, blockchain background or didn't know anything about that, I'm always super skeptical about those technologies. Uh, so a good, decent explanation would well, always help. Uh, so that's kind of the main concern. And you probably still at this point would get uh, sticky users that are early adopters in profile. Uh, so still not somebody looking for full featured system to do science, uh, but somebody looking to invest in new opportunities for the future. Uh, and like, so yeah, the, like optimizing for those kind of uh, user profiles is probably a way to go which again means better wording, but uh, full uh, feature onboarding may, might not be super necessary at this point. Uh, like it, that would be a high risk, uh, high reward. So it might be too costly at this point in time, I guess. 
So I have one more question on this uh, chain of thought. For the pre-conversion onboarding, how do you, like, how would you see that working into our current UI? Like a, like a better about page, like pop-ups, um, like a modal or something? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> like explaining what it is, uh, why you can and should depend on it, and things like that. So like things mm -hmm. that will make me a user. Yeah, that, that's, I have the same issue. Like I can't, just like Dragon said, yeah, there is a, you know, there is a certain amount of stigma with, you know, with uh, cryptocurrency and uh, especially among kind of like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call researchers conservatives. Uh, the researchers are grounded in what they're doing. So they are slow to change their opinions. So it would be nice to have some sort of material that we can, you know, like, I, I, if I want to tell other person about the research hub, right now I can just send them the link to the website. But I, this way I, I don't control the process of their first impression formation. And they, you know, and, and if I, if I'm, if I'm cautious that they will get the wrong idea, I just don't send it, right? But there, if there was would be some sort of material that I can share, I don't know, maybe like a very short, very dense in terms of explanation and uh, everything video on YouTube, like two minutes or something. Just give us a tour. This is how you download, upload papers. And, and actually what it does, what it entails and what it doesn't entail, because a lot of users, I guarantee have a false impression. There is some copyright cost, like you are uploading the papers that you're not supposed to, like you're breaking some laws, you know, or maybe you are robbing yourself an opportunity to publish it later. Like people, I don't think people know that there is no cost to upload in the paper, you know? Yeah, so there there should be some sort of, like I said, material, I don't know, PR material or whatever you want to call it that I can show to a friend. So outside of a video, is there, like, are you thinking just like send the explainer page where there's more information or do you want like a PDF? We can make a, a Git book is kind of like a like technical documentation um, for some projects. Like what, what exactly would you want to send to your friend? I don't know. It's... No, I don't think I don't think they will actually read through it. I think there is a certain stigma yeah. about not certain the, people don't read yeah. <laughs> agreements and stuff. So I was thinking it, it should definitely have some interactive form. I liked the way it was. I shared the link in chat here how it was in Research Rabbit project. They recently had they in the past they used to have like a video up front. Now I don't. Now there is no video, but there is like you know a short GIF, right? just animation showing the flow of what people do. So maybe if there was, I don't know, what would it be like a, an, an additional about page, like short about page, something like that in the research hub where yeah, you would get this briefing of what's, what's going on. Dragon, you had a video on uh, uh, Unfold Research that was just a quick, like, you know, show the utility of the platform. Like, I think you had it for your designs when you're like going over the the paper page and stuff. We could do something like that with maybe like um, a little bit of editing where we put some testimonials of like why people are using it or something like that. Yeah, definitely go with a shorter format than 12 minutes. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, there is <laughs> there is a science in building uh, the landing pages and like uh, making sure that your users and visitors convert. Uh, so that is exactly the kind of help that you want from a person that is offering that kind of help. Uh, so do use them and use their help uh, in time. Uh, I can agree with Anton that having some short uh, video is always super helpful because it's just uh, densely packed with uh, information and nobody has the time to uh, bookmark yet another uh, white paper to read later or anything like that. Uh, or again, having a static page with text and some pretty, uh, pretty decently done illustrations that makes the point what is so different about Research Hub. So you have a certain value proposition that you're trying to sell that's different than all the other platform. And that is what you need to communicate. And like, 
after they get that that point, what is different, you need to address their concerns. Like we aren't taking your money, your paper uh, might be breaking something. So you have this feature, you can flag them or you can just remove them yourself, things like that. Uh, and like that is how the user will see the platform. They will try to learn what ca they can do and like what, what is wrong that they can do and how to fix that. Uh, so yep, if you have a professional at your hand to help with that. Yeah, I agree absolutely, especially about the last part. Like, th basically, we need to uh, infer what would be the, but what does it mean? But like, what is the downside in, in the head of the user after they read what you can do in Research Hub? And uh, like I said, first first flag is going to be, why is this cryptocurrency? Is this a scam or something? And second one is going to be, what 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 am I not supposed to upload? Like, well, what is the, how does the copyright work with this? Like, am, am I, am I supposed to be sharing papers or not? Yeah, this is super helpful. So what we can do is set up a call um, with Andrew, is his name. Um, I'll add him to the mod channel after this and introduce him. And then we can, like, if we all just got on a call and you guys explain this to him, I'm sure he'd be like, oh yeah, I can definitely, you know, like uh, put out some copy to help make the, about page like a little bit more convincing the other thing um if you do end up making a video or even an explainer page uh it would be cool if you can get some sort of incentive uh like a token for reading it or viewing the video like similar to how uh like new coins on coinbase or or uh these explainer pages on uh, on um, gitcoin Oh, totally. I, I actually, I bet that wouldn't be too hard to do, like to have somebody earn a research coin for like watching X amount of time in the video or something. Um, yeah, Coinbase Earn does does that kind of type of program. I think, yeah, that stuff is always really useful. Let me, uh, I'll write that down. Okay, cool. Um, so to move on, I want to go over the um, power user program. And so uh, Anton had a million posts again. I think you had eight uh, posts, Anton, 13 comments, two responses. Um, Nick was four posts, three comments, and two responses, so five comments. Um, and then Philip had a couple as well. So uh, I just want to like grab your guys' thoughts on like how this is going so far, do you think? Um, whether we should expand it to like some more people? Uh, one of the challenges there is that um, it, it's hard to know exactly how much value we're giving away with it. So yeah. it might be better to wait until we have a better understanding before we open it up to like everyone. I, I think like at the end of the day, the main goal of this program is to give us information to help implement a V2 incentive structure for everyone. So this is almost like a, a small test group so like through that lens should we invite more people to this test group to get better data and like if so um how many and then any changes to our reward structure from last week is there a uh, notion page with the uh, reward structure mm -hmm. let me I'll, I'll share it in the chat right here cool. yeah because like we we uh, we discussed it last uh, week but i don't know if it's implemented yet that so we have so seven comments and seven posts are the max, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I think I brought up the I, the possibilities that maybe we should count replies at separate, like uh, like if you reply to someone else's comment. That because it's like it's a different type of interaction, you know. Like uh, it definitely pro in the ideal world, I think it will provoke conversations, un unlike you know, unlike posting comments in in your own you know paper upload that you just did so i don't know if we so i would be an advocate of including that as also a part like similarly rewarded and i definitely would want more people because um basically we have like five six right or however much many oh okay so there is extra 50 or how does it work I, I basically, so a reply counts as a comment plus an added 50. 
So Anthony, oh, I think okay. eleven of them this time. So I, I added like an additional, I, I guess, five fifty to your uh, total. Okay, I gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah, I do want more people because my personal uh, bottleneck was I tried to respond to other people, but then I ran out of comments to respond to because some of them were like deeply specific about medicine. I don't know about that. And some of them I already replied to. So I, you know, I had to go like in the past in the very old comment section to talk to people. So I would want more people to interact with. <laughs> How, how many do you think we should try and aim for like in in a perfect world to balance like not giving out too many but then also getting enough data where like it's actually meaningful when we try and do a v2 maybe five ten okay yeah i think we can definitely get at least double the number we have now for next week and then maybe 10 for the week after that um Cool. So one of the thing that I was curious about, um, one of uh, the best like marketing things I've done so far is posting papers to Reddit, where like if it's like a cool paper that's about like you know like CBD or like like opioids or something like that, um, posting the research hub page to our science will like I've had a couple get to the top of our science and that'll be like fifty thousand clicks or something. So um, a lot of, from like 2017, I remember a lot of uh, blockchain projects would have like bounties for like doing tweets about the project or something like that. Do you guys, uh, just overall, do you think it would be worth it, not even thinking about this group, but like as we grow and have more community members, uh, setting up some kind of like social media um, content production bounty system where if you like, Post a paper to Research Hub, and then also shared it to our science. You get like double the rewards or something like that. I mean, in general, referral programs are there for a reason because they are helping everybody. Uh, so yeah, that is always a good thing to have. Is it too early or is it too costly to implement? And like, which ways uh, you could do the referral program? Uh, like, is it email or just copying the links or something more advanced? Uh, yeah, it depends, but it's probably a nice to have. Yeah, I think yeah. It's like a social media type thing where like to get people to like share research hub links in more places. It should definitely be something very humble in terms of rewards, right? Because the, it's my understanding that people gamed the referral link last time, right? Yeah, totally. So it should be something minor or, or, or not necessarily minor, but uh, rewarded as a function of actual help to research hub. Like if, 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 it, if it gets like 10K views on, on uh, Reddit, I actually don't know if it's a lot or little, but if it gets like a lot of views on Reddit or a lot of upvotes, then then you can maybe you know dish out more rewards, something like that. Okay, so makes sense. sense. Sorry, go ahead. My fault. Uh, sorry, it was mine. Uh, but uh, yeah, it makes sense to uh, like not uh, reward any action, but something meaningful. For example, like if you refer. Uh, and you get a new, like you convert a new user from it, then that's good because like Anton said, like it's actually helping the platform. It's not just some uh, one-off action like taking a, a view at the page and that's it. Uh, I mean, many apps, uh, I think even Notion is having like, uh, you get one month of free subscription if you get a new user or you install our browser extension or you do some meaningful action uh, that is leading to a spread of the platform uh, like more efficiently. So yeah, good point there. So um, I was thinking about it from the perspective of like manually testing something that we could then uh, try and implement for the entire user base. But you bring up a good point where like tracking conversions, like if we could do a referral program where the reward was tied to like a conversion plus quality content, um, yeah, that could be pretty useful. Yeah, that, okay, so I see where you were going initially with it. With the manual one, you could, 
it, 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 it's a manual one i guess it's easier to start small right because you, it's, it's fully in your hands just like the power user program it i think you can if you want you can make a power user user division of like outreach or something you know that users that are specifically going to create high quality posts on reddit and promote it and you know and they will be paid you know how, however much you agree and so it's going to be like trust based payment i guess it's so what i'm thinking is like stage one of like trying to figure out the incentives is trust based where it's like we're all you know kind of friends you know like we all like talk to each other all the time like it's nobody's gonna scam each other here <laughs> you know but once it becomes open up to everybody you know like i, I think like it's better to test things out get the wrinkles out and then open it up to everyone yeah, then maybe it makes sense to just recruit, uh, you know, few volunteers and discuss the uh, RSC reward that they're willing to do it for. I think it would be, you know, in, in a way because it, it can be it can be both a positive or a negative. Right? Think about this way: What if we implement this merit-based automatic uh, outreach program and then people will start just spamming research hub everywhere and uh, people can start hating research hub for this you know sp spammy encouraging politics you know that's uh that's kind of what i wanted to get to like if, if there was potential for it to be like oh man because a lot of i remember um a couple years ago some other science projects did icos and it would be like if you search open science on Twitter on the hashtag, it would just be littered with these like ICO scams. And so I don't know that, that to me came off as not ideal, but I yeah. think on a small scale, it would be cool. So mm -hmm. between. what platforms did you have in mind uh, other than Reddit? Twitter? Uh, yeah, Quora maybe too, where like there's some scientific questions and Stack Exchange where you could like cite a paper in your answer on Stack Exchange that like links to Research Hub. You know, in order to, it helps our SEO just having links, and then um, you know, brings more users. Hacker news always. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hacker news absolutely. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So just a couple minutes left. Uh, one thing uh, Dragon mentioned when I spoke with him is that he thought these calls should be longer, and then we don't have to use all of it. But curious what you guys think about like changing it to an hour and then like trying to keep it to half an hour. But if things go long, no big deal. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, if someone needs to go, they can just drop off. But yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing with the uh, last few minutes, um, Thomas, did you have any questions when it comes to? Um, this uh, new like Authoria type feature uh, for the guys here. Um, yeah, I guess like it might be a bit too much to go for like, anything that we've created. But if you guys have time, like sometime this week, to hop on like a uh, like call with me and Pat, and we'd like to sort of like interview you about like your your research process, like what tools you're currently using, what tool up. Uh, Tools you find like painful to use, what parts of the research process are painful or annoying to you. Because yeah, we're trying to build out features that kind of like hook you earlier into the research process and kind of like uh, disrupt or provide useful utility to you uh, throughout the research process. And not just, like once you have the final or you can push it the research hub and just, like can discuss it as sort of kind of what this way kind of helps you like market it or like do like an MA on it afterwards after all your research is done basically and you have the information from script. We we want to like try and conceive of some features that could help throughout the whole process, like ideation, uh, writing it up the document, getting peer reviews, getting funding. So, so Thomas, for a, a little context here, um, we had a group out of UCLA which does quantum biology. Um, which is like the quantum, you know, ness of like biochemical reactions. Um, and they want to use Research Hub to publish like a live blog of what's going on in their lab. And so uh, our new post feature is can do that now 
but um, we'll end up needing to refine it significantly to like provide actual value. So we're trying to explore use cases for like if we were to build out our new post feature with like a sweet collaborative editor where like you could do like code, you could have like equations, you know, whatever you need to communicate science. Um, what would people use that for? One of them might be a live blog of a cool lab. Another one might be writing a manuscript, that, that kind of thing. Like just what would you use it for? How do you, how, Optimi not optimi how ambitious do you envision this part to be? Do you, like, do you want it just to be, you know, go go Google Word or whatever, like the Google text editor, the, the one that you share, or do you envision it to be like team organization platform? Like, I don't know if you've used Asana. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a uh, project management. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of ELN, ELNs will have like some project management stuff in them. I think what we'd like to do though is like, um, before we even get into that much detail, learn about like how you would use it, you know, in order to take that data and then get back to you with like, oh yeah, we think we need a Kanban board in here, you know, or like, you don't really need that. You just need more notion type functionality, like focusing more on like the actual use case first and then getting to this part. I see. Which tools do you think that we have sort of the best chance of like actually convincing you to switch uh, and use our tools that we wish. Things you find more annoying to you right If only there were a software integrated properly that you switch over right away kind of thing. Is this how you want it to be framed? Do you want do you want to start a direct competition with what people are using now? Or do you want it to be a simplified version like you know, you know what Nami said last time. You're like, oh, you want to, we want our own GitHub, right? He said, I already use GitHub, so for me, it's going to be pain in the ass to maintain two version control systems, right? So, do you want people to abandon what they're using now and switch entirely to Research Hub, or do you want it to mimic what they're doing, but it make it uh, simplistic enough so people use it just as a presentation tool for their REC supporters, like, 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 essentially, you can you can give up the idea that it needs to be like an advanced uh, co collaborative tool. It just needs to be a, a simplistic collaborative tool that you can use to essentially advertise what you're doing in the lab. I, I think we're like going back to square one to the point where we don't even know if it's a collaborative editor, which is the useful thing here. Like for instance, right now you can upload PDFs on BioArchive, you upload PDFs, you know. Um, so so even like it might be plugging into uh, Google Docs, you know, or GitHub, not necessarily recreating those features and having them easy to port over. Um, so, so yeah, well, like I think the, the point of the questions would be to be like, you know, how do you co-author documents when you co-authored documents and how could you see yourself and people like you using something like this in the future with one example use case being uh, lab blogs, you know, from a lab for PR purposes. But there also might be like, you know, maybe you need to write a pre-registration with somebody else, you know, who's across the country or something, you know. If you if you already use something like Google Docs or Overly, you find it perfectly to suits your needs right now. You couldn't ever imagine yourself switching to use something else uh, if it was just like offering you like coins or something. Right? Oh, that's the kind of information that we want to know. Like, what do we reasonably have a shot actually like competing with? I mean, there are obviously standalone companies working just on the problem of collaborative editing of the documents. It's such a huge problem on its own that it requires multiple teams working just on that. And there definitely are features that like, won't be implemented by a research hub anytime soon uh, for me or other people to consider switching and making research hub the main collaborative editor for our team. Uh, so, but again, to Anton's point, like, is that how you, what you want Research Hub to become? Is it a tool for writing and publishing, or is it an infrastructure for sharing and for earning uh, for research papers? Uh, it's a very, like, you definitely commit yourself to a completely different path 
if you choose to develop very advanced technical features that will require a tremendous amount of time and resources to develop fully to be at the level where they can compete with some other companies and products, let alone like to be at a competitive advantage of whatever sort. Uh, so, I mean, that that's a much bigger, like uh, higher level path that you need to pick. Uh, so, yeah. So, so yeah, that's, um, I had a great conversation with uh, Dragon last week and um, he mentioned something which I think is important that we should keep in mind, even internally, Thomas. Um, like our competitive advantage is the RSC economy and that like we can build tools that plug into that and take advantage of it and help to make it the economy more robust but that like we shouldn't hide that and be like oh hey let's build a collaborative editor that brings so much value on itself because it won't we won't be able to compete with big teams doing that like what we need to do is how does a collaborative editor make the res or research coin economy better Right, right. That's what ex that's exactly what I thought. Like you guys can't possibly compete with teams that have like hundreds of people on board doing just this one thing, right? So if your if your primary mission is to just create a platform where people like like Patrick said, yeah, you know, they they have opportunity to exchange RC for certain actions. That's that's it, right? And I had the same impression when you were talking about the the journal, right? you like i don't think the journal or the collaborative editor should become should ever become the primary focus of what you're doing you, in a way like if i understand why you your way why you want it right you want it to be like a one-stop experience right like you do everything on research hub you wake up you go to research hub you order your food delivery on research hub you you brush your teeth on research hub and everything else but I think that only is doable after you get popularity due to your primary function, right? And your primary function now is, you know, exchanging papers, discussing papers, and giving research coin to each other. So I think it just should be, if you want this collaborative tool, it should be just in conjunction or as a, as a good enough tool that lets you do other stuff on the website, right? And if, 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 the main goal of the lab nodes is to draw in investors, right? So people can pay to see what you're doing. It, it should it should not be fancy or anything. It can be it can be something as simple as what Kobe is using the the, the thing that where you draw things on the on the board. I forgot what it's called. Whimsical. So so this is like the exact thing that we'd want to nail down to, right? Is the use case collaborative editing, or is the use case sharing notes to bring in money? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Because if that's the use case, like that's what we think the um, quantum biologists really want to use it for, as mm -hmm. well, like drug, like drum up awareness around their field and be like, hey, NIH, this is important. A lot of people care about this, um, and so their goal is more of like a marketing one. So the collaborative editor for that is a different feature set than the collaborative editor that would compete with Overly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, every team and every person, individual, has their own needs and like uh, suggestions what features to build. Uh, I want something to create 2D graphs. Like I would really use that feature. But again, like you, you cannot uh, build just features that user want. Like you're trying to position yourself uniquely on the market and uh, offer something unique. And like, like you already noticed, like the the main value proposition and differentiating factor is the economy and nothing else and like Anton Settler uh, just create other things good enough to be uh, to to not hinder the process that you want to have uh, but it's like the cost that you would uh, spend on trying to build a competitive feature like competitive to Autoria or Google Docs or whatever like it's too huge and like if you're gonna commit yourself uh, to uh, that kind of path and to spending that many resources and work hours and all that, uh, then it's a very, very different strategy and different uh, market that you're targeting. Uh, so, yeah, just two cents. So, uh, one thought on that. I'm not, I'm not sure if this is uh, in line with what you're thinking, but um, since you mentioned the lab, um, what if you were to try to convince labs or even uh, like crypto DAOs to publish their latest update through a post? 
and people could engage there. It's, it's still research. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I think that would be a, perhaps a good strategy, even uh, with, with this uh, new salesperson uh, to like communicate with these dials or labs uh, to update through a post through research hub. Would it okay? There can be a small fix to add to make it a good enough feature for now. Can you create kind of like a post series? It's kind of like a folder. You click on the folder, and then all the associated posts that are like a progress report on a certain project are going to be there, you know, so they're not scattered across a research hub. And then you could have some sort of collaborative uh, tool that that org can uh, can use with that post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they go to Research Hub to write it, and it's not because what what I see uh, them doing right now is they're writing it on Google Docs or whatever. They're downloading it as a PDF, and then the PDF just sits on on their site. So if if they were to uh, write it on Research Hub, uh, that that would that would be cool. Yeah, I think that can totally happen. That's pretty much the exact use case for this one lab. And we even, um, our number one quick paper of all time was from a former digital marketer who was interested in uh, like specific immune deficiency and how it influences COVID-19. And he actually started a lab in Columbia that he was funding and was trying to use Research Hub as a way to like basically market his findings to drum up more attention. So I do think there's, there's something there of this like, post series tied to one group that they're using to hopefully get like token donations or something. Cool. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you guys. Thomas, was there anything, any, any other quick questions that you had or you feeling good? Yeah, it was quick to be, uh, be good to know like sort of what tools you guys are currently using during the research process. Um, Google Docs or Dropbox or uh, like how you get your information as well. You just like browse Hive or Fire kind of thing. I uh, personally, I use uh, Google Docs to work with other people. I use Google Scholar to search for articles that I need or, and I store my stuff in Zotero when, I, when it's offline. Nicholas, how about you? Yeah, so I'm from the business world, so it's maybe a little different. Uh, but Jira, and if it's uh, more research related, it it basically it, it sits on a site like I described. Nice. This is awesome. Yeah, I posted mine. So Google Docs, Google Keep Notes, and Notebook, uh, which is just again a uh, visual uh, storage of documents, sim similar to Whimsical or something like that. I see. Yeah, thanks. That's, that's helpful for sure. Do you mind just super quickly saying how you use Zotero? We've talked to, uh, for a little bit about potentially working like citation management into research hub. Uh, well, so uh, Zotero basically, you know, when I have the Google Chrome integration, the plugin. So whenever I read an article that you know is, I'm going to use for research, I there is like a button that I click and it downloads and creates the entry in Zotero, and then uh, you know you know I sort it by tags or whatever depends on the mode. But the important part for me is the integration with uh, Microsoft Office with the Word. So there is another plugin that you do and then basically when you write an article let's say you need a citation you yeah. you click you click import citation and then you sure search by name or whatever and it creates it call it you select what format and type you want like for me it's american psychological association like six edition or whatever uh and it creates the citation in text but it also creates uh, uh, the reference portion at the very bottom, right? At the end of the, the of the paper, and it is already formatted the way you want it to be. So for me, it's more like a lazy person tool, you know. Yeah, totally. I used to do the same thing with Mendeley. Have, having the uh, works edit done for you. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys. It's fifteen minutes over. Thank you so much for taking the extra time. It was super helpful. Um, do, you, do you have any questions, comments for us for the next week? 
I would be yeah. really interested in hearing like some of your uh, like internal discuss or, like uh, outcomes of internal discussions uh, regarding the editor versus whatever else versus economy uh, kind of focus on features uh, because it seems that will be like the main point for driving this community and like the future of the platform itself. So I know it's an interesting topic, definitely, and an important one. Yeah, so just to quickly touch on that, um, I think one of our ethos is, is that uh, Research Hub should provide value outside of the token is how like we're currently thinking about it officially. And like there should be some value where like if there was no token there, like it would already be so useful that researchers would be using it anyway. And then in theory, um, use the token to then further incentivize that action and other um, basically use that traction to have value in the token, which we can then use the token as more powerful incentive. Um, so, so that's kind of like the official stance. I think we are, you know, willing to go in any direction that makes the most sense, you know, at any point in time, staying flexible. Um, with that being said, um, I think, at least from my mind, one of the, like the MVP of Research Hub is when there's a value to the token. And right now it's not uh, traded anywhere. So I think we'll have like, be able to actually collect like solid user data of like our value proposition or most important one in my mind, um, once we're listed somewhere. So, so that could be right around the corner. And then we'll have like three months to see like, hey, how, how big of an incentive is Research Coin actually for, for people to do specific tasks? Does that make sense? Does that help to answer the questions? It did, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting though, like mentioning, uh, the coin is there as an additional thing, and but then also mentioning that uh, the MVP is consistent of coin actually existing and being traded. Uh, so yeah, j just making sure what it is exactly the pattern that you're choosing and trying to optimize for uh, like that, that could never harm any of the processes. So, yeah. I originally thought that, you know, the, the, the biggest non-coin value proposition of Research Hub is, you know, you're essentially a more calm and relaxed brother of pub peer, right? So this is a place to bring in articles and discuss them. And it also has some, uh, you know, so social network component that Papier lacks, right? The, the upvotes and stuff. So, do do you still think it's this is your main mission, or do you more do you pivot towards the you know the added functionality of the collaborative editor and stuff like that? So, I love the idea of trying to be in the same kind of marketplace as Papier. Uh, I, I guess I think that a collaborative editor would be helpful helpful to be able to have like high quality peer reviews. Um, I also think to get there, we'd need like some kind of version control of an original article. So if you got peer review, you know, you'd be able to like incorporate it into like the post itself. Um, that's definitely something that we'd like to do. Trying to prioritize that, you know, what's what's the feature that um, helps unlock other features. The one benefit of the collaborative editor is that it could be used in like many different places. For instance, if we had like grant applications or something like that, like that would be based on like high quality collaborative editor that you could use for like showing off figures or like like having data incorporated, that kind of thing. Um, but but you're right. I think that is probably the the best value that we could bring like outside of the coin. And even the coin fits in well to that, uh, from my opinion. And then also um, Dragon. Uh, I, that was my own perspective on the MVP. That's not like our, our team's perspective. So I, I think the coin matters a lot and the economy matters a lot, but like that's you know not necessarily how we're like organizing our uh, like internal priorities. Yeah, if it's still about building that uh, something sticky uh, and then coin being just a supplement to that, uh, then yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but then again, choosing the right uh, feature and set of sticky things like is it a, is it a collaborative editor or a version control tool or peer review tool whatever well that's still important right uh but again just being very clear because again there, there are other companies with 
teams that have spent I know months and years building a specific feature. So trying to compete with them uh, dictates uh, things in a very specific way uh, for like the future months for and years for Research Hub as well. Uh, so just I know, taking all of that into account is not uh, an easy thing to do, but it's a necessary thing uh, to think about and to uh, get to some sort of conclusion about. So that's uh, the way you phrase that is super helpful. I think Thomas, we should we should bring up that concern during like our presentation and be like, hey, here's you know the potential downside. Um, okay, cool. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been awesome. Uh, does, does anybody have anything else? Cool. Well, until next week, see you guys. Uh, see you guys.